RAID 5, um, you know, basically the whole point is, is that you've got multiple drives and they're supposed to protect themselves in a fashion so that if this, you know, one drive dies, you can replace this one drive. In the meantime, uh, while, while things are you know, happening, you can still run, use your server, still keep on going. Ultimately, that's the point. A lot of people call the drive a parity drive, which is actually incorrect because it's a distributed parity. It's over all of the drives. So you'll actually get something that looks a little bit more like this. Now, I've simplified this enormously because I've had to give this kind of speech to uh, executives. So, and so I made a flash demo to try to help them along as well. And it's very simplified, but then I'll actually go into the real stuff. I'll actually show you what it actually does. But, um, and one of the other things too is I want you to understand about controllers. This is where the difference comes in between I went and just used my SATA connector on my motherboard and you know, put two drives together and did something with a controller versus uh, I went and bought a nice, you know, fancy $400 three-wear drive uh, controller. So controllers, basically the difference is, is whether or not they have a processor or not. If they don't have a processor on the board, they're host-based. They're using your CPU. So if you have two hard drives, whatever that it's trying to calculate to deal with this stripe size and the content itself, it's going to use your processor to do it. So if you have a RAID 5, and you have three drives, maybe it's gonna take up seven or eight percent of your processor. But you go stacking eight drives in there, the amount of calculations that this thing is gonna to have to do to produce the parity so that you can distribute it across the drives is gonna be massive, it's gonna be enormous. So you know, you get these guys kind of saying, why is my workstation so slow? I got this RAID, it's supposed to be fast and all this other stuff. It's like, well, you know, you got that $100 controller or use the one on the motherboard and you've got all these drives it's trying to calculate the speed for. So, so you have your discrete controller, which has a processor, and you have your host base. And what's happening in software when you try to reassemble RAID, this is what takes so long, is that most of the time, you have to go through this with software, and it has to go do that math and recalculate things. And they found some new ways to actually, in the last six months, a lot of the software I've been using has changed dramatically. And I could do things in minutes now compared to what happened six and seven months ago where I'd have to wait two hours to get a result. So I can now actually get results in a timely manner enough to do a demo in a, in, in a room like this. So, uh, <clears throat> and here's the other real caveat here. You gotta, the reason that you're looking at a RAID array probably to do a recovery is because somebody did something else wrong. So one drive died, your system was still running. And the guys just take six months before they replace that other drive and their, another drive dies, right? You guys all heard this, this is ridiculous, right? Oh, the alarm was going off, but we turned it off. And we waited, oh, now we can afford to drive. And so something else happens in the meantime. So now here's your real problem. If no one knows which drive failed in what order, because the only one that is in sync with the good drive is the last drive that died. The rest, the other bad drive then is, you know, if anybody has ever actually gone into the RAID array uh, configuration itself and said force drive online, and basically it resyncs that bad data back from the, dead, the, the bad drive back to the good drive. That's what's happening. It's really just destroying the parity, all the information and everything. So I'm gonna give you my simplistic um, uh, CEO version of uh, Flash. And we'll see how you guys like this one. All right, so here's a little bit off the screen, but you'll get the point. All right, so, uh, so this is basically my four drives in the array, and basically the, each slice, and it's much more complicated than this, but ultimately the point ended up being, you know, the slices are added up, and then there's a parity that's produced. So we have A plus B plus so on and so on, all the way down, and you have your parity. And so that's how these are all distributed across the drive. Very simplistic view, but here we go. A little washed out. That's just bad, period. All right, so this is my very simplistic view of what's actually happened in the RAID controller. And uh, you do get an alarm, but maybe not that alarm, but you get an alarm. Uh, you may get that alarm later. But so one drive is dead, came out of the picture. And you, you can understand it when you're simply looking at this, this type of formula where it's you know, A plus B equals C, and you just take what your X is and you figure out what it's gonna be. You can reproduce that fairly easily. And this is what actually happens when you're actually, you have a missing disk in your array you can actually add in a blank missing, missing disk and figure out from the calculations what that content is. So your content doesn't exist anymore if you have a drive that's dead. It's rebuilding that on the fly in the controller or in your CPU to spit it back out to you. 
So it's not actually a something in existence when you turn this machine off if it, any request that you make is coming back from the processor from that standpoint. So now, again, uh, like I said, it's a little simplistic of a view. So let me show you what's really kind of happening. 37, 38. All right, so it's not really doing you know, A plus B equals C. It's exclusive ORing these pieces together. So it basically, in order to produce parity, it takes the number of drives minus one, it takes all of that content across the slice, it exclusive ORs it, and then it produces a parity. And that parity is what it writes on the disk. When that's missing, then they just do the opposite. They replace the parity with the other drive, they reverse the formula, and they can figure out what it's actually doing. So it's kind of cut off here, but it's, you know, slice A, exclusive OR with slice B, and so on and so on. So it's doing all this math to recompute what it is that you get back as your data. And there's a couple of different arrangements that RAID arrays can actually have. And typically we're talking about a Linux slash Unix terminology here when we talk about them in these fashions because in the Windows world, if you're actually reassembling them, they're exactly the same thing. They just have different names. They just try to simplify it. So they'll just call standard, uh, reverse, continuous and that's about it so they just try to use like a, a standard verbiage for this but as you can see if these were your drives and these were the type of slices this one's typically going to be considered a standard so you'll get and it's called left asynchronous then you'll actually get others that are in a different order where the last drive in the row of the parity changes left asynchronous then there's a right asynchronous I don't expect people to memorize them but the point is you actually see these things when you're actually trying to determine what your slices are and what your order is so there's four different basic ones, plus all the others, dynamic, and so on and so on. So, <clears throat> so this is basically my idea about steps to recover a RAID 5 array. The first thing is that most people go and say, oh, look, I've got these you know, good drives. You know, I've got five dri drives in my array, and, and you know, three of them are good. I'm going to go image my three good drives. Well, you just wasted a lot of time, because if you don't get at least one more drive back, you don't repair it, you don't do the physical rebuild, you don't image it, you got nothing. Because if you don't have X minus 1 as far as your drive, so if you've got five drives, you need four working in order to actually get this content back, uh, you're not going to get anywhere. You, can't, you won't have anything at all. So don't waste time and space trying to go image the good drives. Focus on the bad drive. If you can't get the bad drive, at least good enough. You don't have to get every sector from it. You don't even have to get all the sectors from it. I mean, just you know, even a good portion of them can be missing. And you can still actually reassemble the content. But what's going to happen is while you're processing it in software, it won't know what to expect. All the software expects the, the, the content to be in order and to not be corrupt. So the software will crash when it hits those bad segments where there's supposed to be data in most cases. It's, a, it's typically uh, try, do, extract, and then after it crashes, restart and go through the process again. So, uh, so I'm at that spot where you repair your disks. Then you go back and you image, the, you know, make sure that you get the bad drive image. Then you get your good drive image. Uh, and then you're going to go before you actually spit out this final image. So there's normally a process, like I take these three drives and I weave them back together and I spit out a new image so that I can extract my files from it. And so that's where we're at right here. This is the part we're about to do, is we're going to test the data and see if we can figure out from the data what it looks like and what your, your size and stuff is. Now, it gets really hard if you don't know at least one of the X's that you're looking for. So your, your basic X's are going to be, you know, the order of the drive, the stripe size, and then the order that the controller actually did, whether or not it was right, synchronous, left, you know, and so on and so on. Most of the time you can find out really quickly about the controller. So you can get that X taken care of right away. And then if you have a limited number of drives, let's say three drives in a RAID array, you know which one's going to be your first drive almost right off the bat. So you only have two alternatives for your other two choices. So you can figure those, t those pieces out pretty quickly. So I'm going to assume that we get through a, por a portion of that in order to actually make that happen. So, uh, so basically what we're going to do, if we were doing this dynamically, we go create our DD images, and then I'm going to use RStudio. I'm going to take those DD images, and I'm going to put them back in dynamically. I'm going to pick my sizes and the physical uh, array itself, the order of the array. And then I'm going to extract these pictures, the same as I did for RAID 0. It doesn't matter whether you're doing RAID 0 or you're doing RAID 5. There's only one change, basically, that you're going to make, which is the order of the controller, what the controller is going to do. Otherwise, it's exactly the same process for both of those. 